Hey guys and welcome to Hada Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about cholecystitis. So let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of the disease, let's take a closer look at what cholecystitis actually means. So the word cholecystitis is actually a Greek word and the first part of it, which is cholecyst, means gallbladder and itis means inflammation. So if we bring those two parts together, we get cholecystitis, which means the inflammation of the gallbladder. And what is the gallbladder, you may ask? Let's take a closer look at what the gallbladder is all about. So the gallbladder is a small pouch-like structure that sits just underneath the liver. It is responsible in storing the bile produced by the liver. The bile is important because it helps to digest the fats we consume. In response to certain signals, the gallbladder squeezes the stored bile into the small intestine through a series of tubes called ducts. So if we take a closer look at this picture on my left, we see where the gallbladder is situated here just beneath the liver. And we see these little ducts which come out of the gallbladder and actually join into the small intestine. So the gallbladder is responsible in storing and secreting the bile. So the bile is produced by the liver, it then gets stored in the gallbladder and when we consume any sort of fatty foods, the bile is secreted into the intestine to help to digest or break down those fats. So that is the function and the definition of the gallbladder in the body. So now let's talk about what is cholecystitis. So as we mentioned before, cholecystitis is the inflammation of the gallbladder. So when the drainage pathway for the bile stored in the gallbladder, called the cystic duct, becomes blocked, usually by a gallstone and sometimes, in rare cases, by a tumor, the gallbladder becomes swollen and may become infected. And this is when cholecystitis occurs. So if you take a closer look at this video that's playing on my right-hand side of the screen, we see that this is the gallbladder. When we have a stone, we can have a gallstone getting stuck in one of those ducts, or we can have a tumor compressing this duct, uh, it'll cause a blockage in the escape of bile. So the bile won't be able to drain out of the gallbladder, and that'll cause an increase in pressure, an increase in size, and the gallbladder will essentially become inflamed and infected because of that stasis of bile. And this is what cholecystitis is. It's that inflammation and infection of the gallbladder. So now let's talk about some signs and symptoms of cholecystitis. So if our gallbladder is enlarged and inflamed and we have a blockage in that cystic duct so our bile isn't able to drain out, we're going to have pain. So usually the first symptom the patient will experience is abdominal pain. And that is usually located in the middle to upper right side of the abdomen because that is where the gallbladder is actually situated in the body. The patient may also have clay-colored stools, so they have changes in their stool and also changes in the color of their urine as well. So the urine is usually darker and the stool becomes clay-colored. They may also have signs and symptoms of vomiting, nausea and fever, of course. If we have infection or inflammation in the body, it's going to cause the fever and leukocytosis or the increase of white blood cells. There's also going to be the yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eyes, which is jaundice. And that is because of the increase in bilirubin. The pain will also typically occur after a meal because as we said, the gallbladder stores the bile and after we eat a high fatty meal or any sort of meal, the gallbladder will start to secrete the bile in response to that signal of food intake. So that is why the pain is typically after a meal. The patient may also experience chills and shivers and abdominal bloating. So there are a few risk factors that are commonly known to be associated with cholecystitis and that are the four F's. So usually most patients may have two to four of these risk factors. So they are usually fat patients in their 40s, female and fertile. And these are the four classic F risk factors for cholecystitis development. So now let's talk about the diagnosis of cholecystitis. So the first thing we can use is the blood test and here we will have the increase in the white blood cell count and this is a sign of inflammation and infection in the body. So the liver function test will also show increased values in the liver enzymes which are the ALT or alanine aminotransferase and aspartate aminotransferase or AST levels 
as well as bilirubin because that bilirubin will also be increased we'll have the yellowing of the skin and the mucosas we can also do an abdominal ultrasound to diagnose the patient and this is usually used to identify signs of inflammation involving the gallbladder and is very good at showing gallstones so if you take a closer look at this image on my right we see the ultrasound of the gallbladder and we see the thickened wall of the gallbladder here we see the free fluid in that space we see the stones within the gallbladder and we see the absence of echoes posterior to the calculate shadowing so that's just here is the absence of echoes due to the stones so the stones are also called calculi and this causes shadowing here because of those stones so we can also do an abdominal ct which can help identify the inflammation of the gallbladder or it can also identify the blocked bile flow and sometimes it can also show the gallstones we can also use magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography and that is called the MRCP and the MRCP is a type of MRI exam that makes detailed images of the liver, gallbladder, bile ducts, pancreas and the pancreatic duct and it is very good at showing gallstones, gallbladder or bile duct inflammation and a blocked bile flow. So these are all the diagnosis techniques we can use to diagnose a cholecystitis. So how does one go about treating cholecystitis? So to control the inflammatory process, most patients will require hospitalization. And usually the first thing we do at the hospital is we ask the patient to start fasting. And at the hospital, the patient will be required to undergo a fasting period. And this takes the stress off the inflamed gallbladder. Because remember we said that the gallbladder is stimulated the moment we start to intake any sort of food. So in order to give that gallbladder a chance to rest and a chance to settle down a bit, we will ask the patient to fast. So we can also do fluid replacement therapy, and this is in the form of an IV drip. So an IV drip will be established through which fluids and electrolytes can be administered, and this helps to prevent dehydration and electrolyte imbalances. So usually the patient with the inflamed gallbladder may also have an infection locally at the site of the gallbladder so we have the inflammation and infection so we will have to treat this with antibiotics so the antibiotics here can be used to fight the active infection we can also give the patient pain relievers and this can help control the pain until the inflammation starts to go down we can also do the gallbladder stone removal and this is a procedure called the endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography so remember we spoke about this technique in the diagnosis but we can also use this technique to remove any small stones that may be blocking the bile ducts or the cystic ducts so if you take a closer look at this picture on my left we see what the ERCP process looks like so the endoscope is inserted through the mouth into the duodenum and once it's here it's able to enter into the pancreas as well as the gallbladder into these tiny ducts and it can be inserted into these ducts and can remove any obstructions, any tiny obstructions. So if the stone is small enough to be removed in this way, we can use ERCP to remove the stone there. So continuing with treatment, in severe cases, a gallbladder removal surgery, which is called a cholecystectomy, must be done. And this is usually a minimally invasive procedure involving a few tiny incisions in your abdomen and this is called a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. So if you take a close look at this picture, on the bottom of my screen, we can see in this first image here, we have the laparoscopic cholecystectomy, and we see that it's not an open abdominal surgery, it's just four small incisions made into the abdomen, and we can access the gallbladder through these four incisions. We can also do an open procedure in which a long incision is made in your abdomen, but this is rarely required. And this is the picture we have on my right. We see the open cholecystectomy in which we have a long incision to enter into the abdomen to get to the gallbladder. And the timing of the surgery depends on the severity of the patient's symptoms and their overall risk of problems during and after surgery. But most surgery is usually performed within 48 hours of admission. It usually also depends on how badly the gallbladder is infected and what the patient's vitals are sitting at. So once the patient's gallbladder is removed, bile flows directly from the liver into their small intestine rather than being stored in their gallbladder. 
So once the gallbladder is removed, the bile will actually flow straight from the liver into the small intestine. And that brings us to the end of this video on cholecystitis. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. I will put a link in the description down below for the full video of what a cholecystectomy looks like. So if you're interested in watching the full video of how a gallbladder is removed through a laparoscopic approach, you can click the link in the description. If you'd like to download a copy of the presentation, you can also click the link in the description. Uh, please make sure you turn on your bell notification so you're notified every time we have a new upload. Take care and bye for now.